Today I have the privilege and honor of reviewing the Rogue Territory Supply Jacket. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Dale, Dale's Leatherworks. Welcome back to my channel. And huge thanks to my friend Jen at Patina Miles who sent me these two amazing Rogue Territory supply jackets to review. And she actually was kind enough to let me keep this one. To return the favor, I am going to be selling this one on my website, dalesleatherworks.com. So apologies for this video as most of it was filmed outside as I was sort of talking and giving my thoughts. A lot of the footage was just no good because the camera was kind of waving around and it was kind of chaotic. These jackets come in quite a few colors. The one I'm wearing is the supply jacket in lined olive ridge line. They also have a similar one, the cord collar supply jacket in lined whiskey ridge line. They've got the tan ridge line, which I believe James Bond wore. They've got the, the hunter green ridge line, which is very similar to the olive. They've got the brown ridge line, the tan ridge line, all those colors, they come in both lined and unlined versions. This gray one is going to be unlined. So the outer fabric is eight and a quarter ounce shelter tent Martexin waxed 100% cotton canvas. The inner fabric is me medium weight Japanese wool blend. Perfect fall jacket, gives you just enough insulation to be comfortable outside. Hand warmer pockets are double blanket lined exterior patch. It's got a welt left chest pocket, interior right chest pocket, fully lined sleeves with satin, branded nickel buttons sewn in Los Angeles, California. So you can expect up to a half of an inch of stretch in the shoulders and chest with wear. But they warn, do not wash these jackets. They will shrink and you'll never be able to wear them again. So this gray Ridgeline jacket retails at $325. It's mostly unworn, but I will be marking that down a little bit to give you a little bit of a discount. This one is a size small, fully unlined. It comes with all the same features as the lined one, just without the lining. So my buddy Nick at Stridewise, he also reviewed this jacket. He did the one that James Bond wore, the tan ridge line. He was vacillating between the large and the extra large. Now he's got kind of a bigger chest. He works out a lot at the gym. I'm also extremely muscular myself. <laughs> But he was saying he liked the fit of the large, but he couldn't really button it up. But to button it up, to put layers underneath, he liked the extra large. I can speak to these two jackets. This small fits me perfectly. It's got just enough room in the abdomen. I prefer a tapered fit. I prefer a slim fit. So I always size down when I can. That said, uh, this small is too small. I actually can't button this up all the way. So these jackets are kind of known for running smaller. I believe that because they added the lining, they created more room in the abdomen region. For this one, they did not do that. So the unlined small is too small for me, but the lined small fits me perfectly. So if I were to opt for this one in gray ridge line, I'd have to size up to a medium. So keep that in mind. The unlined ones do run smaller than the lined ones. I wore it the other day in the rain and the benefits of this jacket that in the rain, it really repels water very well. It keeps the elements off of you. Now, I will say that even though this jacket is lined, it is definitely not keeping me warm enough in 32 degrees. I'm kind of chilly, but it's super stylish. So there's a lot of back and forth on the internet in terms of sizing. And I typically wear a size small in shirts and my leather jackets are typically a size 38 for example in the arrow ridley jacket i'm a 38 and this small fits me perfectly but i'm gonna throw out a caveat to that this is the lined jacket you can see here it's lined with some really cozy wool on the inside which does add a good layer of uh, insulation to the jacket however um, i have another jacket that was sent to me by my friend jen to both sell and to review which is also gonna be featured in this video. Um, that one's also a size small, and that one is unlined, and that one is definitely cut slimmer. That one does not fit me. Now, Nick at Stridewise, he ordered himself both a large and an extra large, and he talked about how the large fit him perfectly in terms of like having a good trim cut. The extra large was the only one that he was able to button up fully. I find that the gray unlined one, I would definitely need a medium in because I can't button it up without it pulling. 
So this one, for example, I could button it up completely. I have a t-shirt on underneath. Um, I don't think I could put on layers though. So if I was gonna layer up underneath this, I would definitely need to go up to a medium. In terms of the sizing, if you're gonna wear a single layer, like a Henley underneath the lined jacket, I would say definitely take your standard jacket size. It's not gonna be too small. This one, I wouldn't size any differently on. However, the gray one, definitely too small at a small. Nick was saying though that when he walked around in his large and had it unbuttoned, it looked better than the extra large. And so if I were to intend to keep the gray, I would have to wear it unbuttoned. It does look better because it has a more trim silhouette. It's a lot more slim looking, more complimentary to my physique, I think. I just can't button it up. So that's just one thing in terms of the sizing. I think they do add an extra inch to the interior of the lined ones because they're sort of anticipating you using this as a, more of a winter garment so that you could add layers beneath it. I will say it's cold, my arms are cold. My core is warm because of that insulated lining. The super duper waxy nature of this jacket does lend it to breaking in a lot better and it forms a lot better of a patina over time. As you can see, the arm creases are already forming up nicely and this jacket does allow for about a half inch of stretch over time, which is a good thing because the more you wear it, it will conform to your body better, your physique a lot better. So we've got a welted left breast outer pocket here. We've got an interior right breast pocket, which would be good for like your cell phone or your wallet or something like that. We've got branded nickel buttons here, which are super cool. This is Martexin waxed cloth. This is actually used in sails and in tents by the military and things like that. It's a super high grade cotton and it's actually, believe it or not, more tear resistant than leather itself. Nick was saying in his video that he actually ripped a leather jacket on a nail one time. This actually will not rip. You could, you could rub this up against rock. You could scrape it on metal. It's not gonna tear on you. It's very tear resistant. It's very durable material. That said, it's just not very warm. It's ideal for fending off the elements like wind, rain, things like that. However, this is not gonna be a good winter jacket for sure. You might wanna throw something over it if, if you're gonna use it in super cold weather. So overall, I think this garment in particular is gonna get the most use in the fall and chillier spring days. Uh, this is not something that I would recommend you use year round, definitely, definitely not. And last but not least, this garment is 100% handmade in Los Angeles, in the US of A. I love supporting American. This jacket is American as it gets. Like Nick said in his video, he doesn't like those, those super heavily waxed barber jackets. They are boxy. I've tried on some before. I do not like the silhouette at all. I really love the silhouette of this jacket, however. It, uh, it's manly, it's rugged, buttoned up or unbuttoned. I notice I get a lot of glances from people. When I walk down the street, they're like, they just, they see it. They're like, oh, what's that? This hole here is an additional hole. It's fully cosmetic to pay homage to the heritage of guys who used to walk around with pocket watches. You'd string your pocket watch through there, Peaky Blinder style. Maybe throw your pocket watch in the inner pocket and just have it hooked through here, something like that. I'm obviously not gonna get any use out of it, but it's a cool feature nonetheless. It distinguishes the jacket. It makes it just a little bit more distinct from more mainstream garments. But Rogue Territory is a super cool company. I'm so happy to finally be covering them on my channel today. A lot of my friends own these garments. They are expensive. This one, for example, retails at $425. If you get the online version, it's $100 off that. Obviously, less work involved, less materials. So $325 for their standard issue supply jacket. Anyways, with that, I'll shut it down. Thanks a lot for watching. What are your guys' thoughts? on the amazing Rogue Territory supply jacket. I think it's earned its reputation. It is an incredible piece. I love wearing this thing. I feel like a million bucks in it. I think it looks super cool. I'm always going after that sort of military aesthetic. You know, I like boots, I like cargo pants. I like, I like military wear. I do like, you know, standard sort of professional wear as well. Uh, I have an affinity for military style without going full on over the top. I think just having just a subtle touch of military aesthetic in your style always gives a good rugged manly touch. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I will see y'all in my next video.